The Red Hot Chili Peppers are one of the most important alternative rock bands of all time. Coming out of the LA punk scene in the early 1980s, they slowly grew from cult band to rising stars to rock favorites. In that time, they juggled members, changed their sound, and put themselves all over the musical map. But I think a lot of people would agree that some of their best melodic ideas came from this man right here, John Frusciante. Let's take a closer look at Frusciante's playing style and his history with the band. Frusciante was a fan of The Germs, a local LA punk band, when he was just nine years old. In his late teens, he also became friends with the previous Dead Kennedys drummer, D.H. Peligro. For you guys who don't know them, The Germs and The Dead Kennedys were some of the most definitional hardcore punk bands of the 80s in the US. So shortly said, Frusciante had a strong connection to punk. And you can hear this very profound punk influence in his raw and minimalistic guitar riffing on the song Emmett Remus. Frusciante loved punk, but he was mind blown when he first heard the Red Hot Chili Peppers funk induced punk sound in 1985. At the age of 15, he became a hardcore Chili Peppers fan after attending one of their early concerts. He was so fascinated by their sound that he learned all of their songs and ended up forming a friendship with the guitarist of the band at that time, Hillel Slovak. Hillel Slovak, the guitarist of the Chili Peppers, died of a heroin overdose. Hillel was uh, 25 years old and tonight's summer rock is dedicated to him. Now, since Frusciante already knew the band's songs, he easily became the new guitarist of the band. But because he wasn't too familiar with playing funk-related riffs, he tried to emulate and take inspiration from Slovak's playing as much as possible in the beginning. You can hear some of his earliest funk-inspired riffs on songs like Higher Ground or Subway to Venus. As Frusciante became more familiar with his role as the guitarist for the band, he started putting more emphasis on melody. Funky Monks is a prime example of this. And talking about funk, his guitar style became even more authentic on that level too. Just so you know, funk is a genre that puts more emphasis on rhythm. Horns, bass and guitars are used as additional percussive instruments in order to amplify the rhythm. After recording two albums with the Chili Peppers, Frusciante took a break from the band to recover from his drug addiction. But he later regrouped with the band to create their most commercially successful studio album, Californication. On this album, the band reached a peak in terms of their ability to create memorable melodies. Around the World, Parallel Universe, Scar Tissue, Other Side and Californication became massive hits, catapulting the band into stardom. Frusciante had further developed his guitar style at this point, using simple chords called triads as a foundation to create simplistic yet catchy riffs and melodies. Triads are chords made up of three notes. Oftentimes he will play these chords and do some Jimi Hendrix inspired finger playing in between them. Another skill that Frusciante and all the other members of the band manifest is the ability to create an almost symbiotic musical relationship. When Frusciante creates a riff, he always keeps all the other elements in mind. The guitar part needs to sound good, not just in itself, but with all the other parts too. By paying more attention to this, it seems like the members have developed a sixth sense for musical harmonies. Bassist Flea, singer Anthony Kiedis, and Frusciante all play different melodies, but somehow it seems to effortlessly fit together. It's a soundscape with details, but there's also a sense of flow. Now let's focus on Frusciante again. Setting the tone for a song can be a hard task, but the way he's doing it on Can't Stop makes it sound easy. The 
guitar melody provides a fundament for all the other instruments to play on throughout the verses. In other songs, instead of setting the tone, it provides a stepping stone for other musical elements to take the lead. Take a listen to the verse on Purple Stain, for example. To finger paint is not a sin, I put my finger in your monthly blood is what I win. Prashanti is only playing four notes in the exact same key for eight bars, while Flea plays a more fleshed out bass melody. Shortly said, this shows that Frashanti is very versatile and flexible as a guitar player. Sometimes he is able to take the lead and set the tone for the entire song, while he other times creates a solid fundament for others. Incredibly enough, this is something that can vary a lot in singular songs as well. Their instruments can switch lead and support roles from one segment to another. And I think that is one of the reasons why the Red Hot Chili Peppers have really stood out as a band in general. Now, technicality is not what Frusciante is most famous for, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have any good tricks up his sleeve. Take the riff he's playing during the verse on Snow. He's using hammer-on and pull-off techniques to play notes without needing to strum the guitar, and he's also playing the notes with an incredible velocity. Because of the technicality of this riff, a lot of guitarists have implemented it as a warm-up exercise to tackle other songs of equal skill level. As you might understand by now, technicality is only one of many surprises that frusciante has got in his arsenal. Another one is his guitar solos. Now, when creating a solo, his goal is to make every single note count. With this sense of intent behind every single sound, he creates solos that are extremely memorable. Just listen to the solo from Danny California. Let's be honest, if you've ever listened to the Red Hot Chili Peppers, you probably only need to hear those two notes in order to remember the rest of the solo. Frusciante quit his work with the Red Hot Chili Peppers on July 29th of 2009 because of creative exhaustion. He had felt this ever since the creation of Californication. But this didn't mean that he stopped creating music in general. He has created an extensive catalog of solo albums that is still in the workings. And in addition to this, he has also collaborated with some really interesting artists. Personally, I think John Frusciante is one of the most outstanding and possibly one of the best guitarists out there in the modern rock scene. And I really hope that he continues to create some amazing work in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video. I just have a question for you at the end here. Have you ever wanted to create profitable video essays and gain massive influence on YouTube? In that case, I have a surprise for you because over the past two weeks, I've spent a lot of time creating this course where I basically teach you everything that has to do with YouTube, video essays, and marketing. I'm also teaching you how to edit videos, how to create scripts for your video essays, how to upload and tag your videos correctly. This is the video essay blueprint, that is what I call it. If you're interested in this course and learning these things, then I highly suggest you click the first link in the description below. It will take you to my Facebook profile and what you have to do is just message me saying, hey Chris, I wanna access this course. And what I'll do is I'll actually give you access to this course for free, but this is something I'll do only for the five people, five first people who click the link. The reason why I'm only giving it away for the five first people is because the course is not exactly done. It's 99.9% .9 done and I need to improve it and I need someone to test it. So yeah, five first people who click this link will be able to test it and get it for free once it's done as well. So that's it. The video has a blueprint. Click the link if you want it and uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye.